Hi there, I'm Nick Baker and I'm leading you through some uh, medical Qigong movements or movement therapy. So we're on a stage here where we call sometimes nitric oxide dysregulation. In Chinese medicine, the terminology for this would be qi stasis, just so you know. And uh, one important marker of this is a gas in your body called nitric oxide. So qi literally means gas in, in Chinese terminology. And nitric oxide is a huge signaling molecule in your body. And when your body has a lot of chronic inflammation or chronic immune system acting up, then your body tends to start pumping out a whole bunch of it. And this will start making you feel over a period of time, if you have too much of this gas, it's going to start making you feel stiff, like pent up. Um, anxious or even like quick to anger and it's going to start uh, disrupting sleep patterns quite a bit. So in this stage the things we look for are largely a lot of sleep related things. You can't get to sleep, your brain's going, 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 you have restless legs, you got to move for a lot of fibromyalgia types. One of the markers I look for is the type of people that, that to manage their pain they have to move whether that be silver sneaker Zumba or water therapy or something they just can't sit still. Sitting and stress make it worse. This is the most common type of pain and even, well, just through modern society, whether we sit behind desks at work or in cars all day and have generally stressful lives, this is a problem for everyone. So here are three tools to use for you to help adjust that, to take that back into your hands and really be able to adjust your health at home. So, first is all of these affect the liver in some way as well. So, the first one though is, is shaking and sighing. Now, if you have this already, you probably find that you're sighing a lot or yelling a lot or something to that effect. I sometimes call it the Gordon Ramsay effect because when you get so pent up, you might want to yell or have an outburst or just kind of go <sighs> a lot because your body's trying to deflate a balloon. It's trying to get rid of gases. So let's use that as a tool here. Now we're using abdominal breathing, which means you're not just breathing into here, you're breathing as if your lungs are in your belly. So as you breathe in, all the way down here, as you breathe out, especially on this stage, use a nice long sigh, okay? And we're going to shake it out. So starting with our hands, let your arms just hang down by the sides. I'll back up so you can see me. And I want you to start shaking out those hands. Just like this. Now you might find that you're more stiff. You might find you're doing this and one arm just doesn't want to move. That's okay. These are markers that the body has inflammation or maybe blood is stuck and is pooling in a certain location. Uh, scar tissue, old injuries, there's a whole variety of things that fall under a category called blockages. So, it's okay. Here as we do this more, we're opening up a bunch of highways. Think of it like that. And we're really starting to shake everything open. Uh, and as you do this, I want you to imagine like when you're at the bank, there's that pen with a little ball chain attached to it so they don't, you know, so no one steals the pen. And, you know, I know I sit there and I kind of play with the pen and the, sh the chain is kind of going back and forth. You get that wave going through it. That's what I want you to do with your hands. Shaking and sighing, of course, it's a movement, so sometimes you have to try to coordinate. In this case, you don't have to coordinate with the movement. Just remember to breathe. Remember to sigh. <sighs> Just like that. All right. Now the body's broken up into three basic levels. You got your upper, your middle, and you got your lower, which is your legs. So here we're just warming up the top. Of course, it's easy to do while sitting down also. Probably tougher if you have handles on your chair. So uh, a chair without any, any sides to it or a stool might be preferable if you're sitting down and doing this. Start shaking. Now, next, let's go down to the legs. I'm going to back up more so you can see. Here, I want you to do like this Scooby-Doo shake with the legs. Like you've just seen a ghost. Start to loosen, you can play with that tuck of your hips and maybe how bent your legs are and to see if it gets a little easier. Um, this is one also, the more you think about it, the more awkward it gets. I know I get it, I've got Caucasian rhythm syndrome. So if I can do it, you can do it. I want you to sort of shake everything out, loosen it up. You may even start feeling like warmth spreading through your lower back on this. Or while you're shaking the arms, a little tingling in the fingertips, that's okay. 
That's natural in this case. Shaking, and then finally we're going to go up to this middle level of the body, which is the hips in this case, and I want you to just gently shake. We'll come a little closer here. I want you to just kind of shake it out. So it's coming from the hips. You can kind of see me in the mirror here. Coming from the hips and shaking throughout the whole body. Right? Now here, essentially, we're sending signals out to the body, saying, hey, we're about to do exercise. And the body responds by sending nitric oxide out to dilate the blood vessels and send blood out with it especially squeezing out essentially oxygen-rich blood from the inside of the body, pretty much at the organ level, and sending it out. So many blockages involve nitric oxide getting stuck and jammed up and causing inflammation of its own. So here we're taking a traffic jam and saying, hey, all the cars go different directions. We're breaking it up. All right? If you've ever had that night where you just go out dancing and you feel better for no reason, um, this is why, right? So go ahead and shake it out. Also, it's very useful if you have to sit for any period of time. Just go ahead and, and wake up, you know, get up and shake it out every now and then. Okay, so that's the first movement. It's called shaking and sighing, or an old traditional name is wind shakes the tree, which I really like that visualization. So use this as a tool for you. Okay, now the second movement for nitric oxide dysregulation and affecting the liver here is uh, pushing outwards. So I think of it like pushing apart two walls. And you can come up with your own names for these, whatever helps you remember. That's the most important part. So here, we're going to extend your arms out like you're pushing apart two walls. And notice also the heels of my palms are out. And my shoulders are nice and relaxed. So as you breathe in, I want you to bring those arms in. Relax the shoulders and the elbows down. As you breathe out, push out. Breathing in through the nose. Breathing out through the mouth. Just nice and slow. Breathing in through the nose. And out through the mouth. Now I don't care if you can only do three of these or if you can do 30. Right? Everyone's got their own ability level especially if you've been in pain for a while or have any chronic illness. The idea, the benefit is that you're doing something here, okay? Notice your shoulders, if they start to creep up on you, just go ahead and let them melt down. You know, if you like, if you're standing, you can even bend your legs quite a bit here and you'll have slightly more effect. If you notice any side effects while you're doing these movements, like I've got a lot of heat going through my body, or I'm feeling tingling, or numbness, you know, just basically, first, don't worry. There's a lot of things are happening in the body, even though it might not look like it. Uh, two, note it and just go ahead and, and move on. Don't, don't focus on it. And three, just focus really on the breathing and the movement, and just be 100% aware of yourself in that, so you're tying everything together. So this motion is pushing apart the walls or pushing out, and this would be a very, also a very useful tool for you on this stage of healing. Okay, now third, uh, third movement for you on this one. This one we already did in, a in another stage as well. So if you've been kind of going through stage by stage, you may have seen this one before but it's very useful at this stage as well. And this one's called stomach massage. So you're gonna take your hands, you're gonna stack them together, both palms, and you're gonna place them on your abdomen. Now here, you're gonna start rubbing around in a nice big circle. Again, this is very easy to do while sitting down or standing up, or sometimes even laying down, of course, if you're having a bad day, a flare up. And sometimes this, this one conjures images in my head of like a, I ate too much at Thanksgiving. I just want to rub my belly and hold it. Or perhaps a time when I was sick, I had a tummy ache as a little kid, and my mother would sit there and rub my belly to make it feel better. All right? So these are instincts we already have. We're just using these as tools. Now here, as we go all the way around, you can add a little bit of pressure. You know, listen to your body and what's okay. But of course, you can add as much pressure as you want to make yourself go oof even and start really massaging in there in a nice big circle. 
As you do this, get that abdominal breathing going, and then we're, well, basically massaging not only from the outside with the hands, but from the inside with that diaphragm. And we're moving out stagnant gases, we're bringing a lot of blood flow down to this area, which will kick the whole lymphatic system into gear, helping massage and regulate peristalsis, which is that smooth muscle flow that pushes food through your intestinal tract, and doing quite a bit of things. And as you're doing this, you might think, well, which direction should I start in? Left or right or what? And, and really, honestly, it doesn't matter too much. What you're going to do is you're going to go both directions equally. Now, I'm going to step back here, and you can see also is that if you're standing, you can also start getting the rest of your body into it, meaning you can actually relax your hips and allow them to turn and even shift weight from one leg to the other. This we're going to start engaging all these little stabilizer muscles as we do it. It just adds a little extra effect. But the most important parts are starting off first with that nice hand motion moving around the gut and that nice deep abdominal breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. Right, like you're deflating yourself. Now I'm going to switch directions here. Right. On average, if you need a number to kind of focus on, think, okay, each time you do it, say 36 times one way and 36 times the opposite way. All right? And frequently enough that you start burping right away. Now, that might be a side effect for you. Like I said, we're moving a lot of stagnant gases. Now think, all those gut bacteria inside you, I said they're spitting out gases. This is important because they're pretty much carbonating you. And there are trying to stake their own territory out. They're terraforming you. So here, this is your way to terraform your world back. We're not trying to kill a bunch of bacteria, we're trying to adjust the environment. So the ones that we want, they're going to stay. And the ones we don't want, they're going to find a better home. And you may start feeling your belly getting nice and warm around now. Maybe even your hands will get a little sweaty. That's all okay. In fact, it's great. So here, this tool, do it a whole bunch. Again, this is stomach massage. Okay, so this is, these three movements are all for uh, what we call nitric oxide dysregulation stage, which is largely marked by, okay, I can't sleep, um, I may have a lot of anxiety, I've got pains that might be of all kinds of different types, but generally get worse with stress or sitting still for long periods of time. And, uh, the big goal is to get you back to sleep and help calm down systems, essentially give your body a way to shut the lights off at night. So use all of them as tools for you to help with healing. And, uh, and once you can sleep, once you can relax, once that maybe thing in the middle of you that kind of clenches, once that sort of dissipates, hey, you know you've made progress and it's time to you know look at other areas of your health, maybe move on to the next stage of healing. So. Here again, I'm Nick Baker, and these are tools for you.